in Ohio, a dispute over early voting could be headed for an emergency review by the state Supreme Court at the attorney after the attorney general there appealed a ruling that orders the state to restore early voting to everyone. See, they had said only military voters get this certain privilege. And uh, the Obama team challenged that, saying everybody should get early voting. And the court agreed with the Obama team. In Pennsylvania, a state law requiring a photo, a photo ID is also uh, headed to the state Supreme Court after a decision to uphold that requirement was appealed. Arguments set to begin tomorrow. Joining me now, Judge Andrew Napolitano, who is our Fox News senior judicial analyst. So let's just start on those two states because Pennsylvania and Ohio, especially Ohio, are just critical to this election, absolutely critical. So what, what is happening in those two states that could change the outcome here? Well, those two states are sort of uh, symbolic of the, of the reaction by states to proven and alleged fraud in 2004 and 2008. In, in the midst of all that, Indiana enacted... Uh, a law that required everybody to have a state ID. You can get them for free and you can get them very quickly. The Supreme Court of the United States upheld that law and said it's so easy to get, the burden is so minimal, and the benefits are so strong it prevents fraud. So many courts, lower federal courts, Megan, as you know, have followed the Supreme Court on the voter ID law. So it is likely that, in my view, that Pennsylvania's law requiring a government-issued ID, sort of like a driver's license, will be upheld. Where the courts have gone the other way, however, is when the states have tried to change when people can vote. And Ohio's is kind of unique. Ohio basically says if you're, if you're in the military or if you're living overseas, you have a longer window in which you can get your ballot here than if you actually do live in Ohio. Formerly, the window was the same. If you're not going to be in Ohio on Election Day, whether you live here or whether you live in England, you had time to vote before Election Day. Ohio reduced that time to vote to make it cheaper, less expensive, easier for them to count the votes, and a court said no. So both of these cases are on appeal. I expect the voter ID will be upheld, but I expect that these regulations affecting when people can vote are going to go in favor of more time to vote rather than less. Well, you know, the thing in, in Ohio was interesting because it pitted Team Obama against military families yes. and military members because the military members said, look, Yes, we get treated specially under these voting laws for a reason. We deserve the special treatment. And once you, tr once you have courts saying you have to treat the military the same way you treat the general ele electorate, that's not going to inure to our advantage. That will result ultimately in courts saying, you know what, forget it. It's too much of a headache. Nobody gets the extended period, including you military members. So they were upset with what happened in Ohio. Let me ask you this, because you mentioned demonstrating, demonstrated voter, voter fraud. Whenever we do these segments, we get emails from Democrats in particular saying, yes. What demonstrated voter fraud? You know, six people in one state in a in a you know a presidential election in which tens of millions cast their votes. We have a, a very famous Supreme Court opinion called Bush versus Gore, which says on its face, "Don't use this as precedent for other opinions." But it basically says the state has to treat everybody similarly, and if the state is not counting votes accurately because they count them differently in one state than another, then that is a form of fraud. You remember, I'm sure as I do, and the people who email you should remember this, the voter fraud that we saw in Pennsylvania two years ago, where people with baseball bats were preventing others from voting. So there, there is certainly a basis for states to claim that fraud will affect the outcome of the vote. And the state has a compelling interest in assuring that votes are tabulated accurately no matter who wins or loses. The Obama administration has been on a mission to challenge these laws, the voter ID laws. Down in Florida, they tried to purge the state's voter lists of people who may not be American citizens. That got challenged and effectively shut down. It's right. not going to get fixed before the November election. They believe that it disenfranchises legitimate voters. And they pointed to some instances down in Florida where, you know, some military veteran, an American citizen, got purged off of the voter roll. So they, the thing is, Judge, they do make mistakes when they do these purges. And when they require photo IDs in some states, even though, you know, a lot of our viewers like that, sometimes real American citizens get shut out because ah, they were born in Georgia 70 years ago. They can't get a birth certificate to prove that they, you know, are a, a citizen and they don't drive. And they actually don't have the photo ID. Well, you know, the Supreme Court uh, examined that very issue uh, in 2008 and basically said where the state gives these photo IDs for free, where the state has a reason to believe that without the voter IDs, 
its vote tabulations might not be accurate. That's good enough. And Megan, that decision was supported across the board by liberals and conservatives on the Supreme Court. So that opinion is likely animating a lot of these lower courts as they view whether or not state IDs are discriminatory against people who don't have driver's licenses mm -hmm. or whether they really do assure accurate, vo accurate voting. The Supreme Court has said as long as the burden is minimal, as long as there's no cost, as long as you can get it in a, in a supermarket as well as at a, a Division of Motor Vehicles office, it's fair. They also say that you can cast a provisional ballot. So yes. if you happen to be one of those people who's about to be disenfranchised, you do get to vote. And if the election is tight and they need to look at those provisional ballots, then they do. And then, the, then you have to jump through the, the proper hoops after the fact. Judge, thank you. Pleasure, Megan. We'll be hearing a lot more from the judge on that between now and November. Uh, and, and maybe even after November 6th. We'll see. Well, John, some brand new information in the Fast and Furious investigation as Congress delays today's hearing into the botched gun walking scandal because the Inspector General report wasn't completed in time. But our very own William Lajeunesse obtained portions of the yet unreleased report. And among the highlights, the Obama administration did not, did not hatch the idea for Operation Fast and Furious, according to this report, but the report finding instead that it was the idea of local ATF officials. The report does fault the Justice Department and ATF headquarters for a failure of leadership, and this comes months after the House voted to hold Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt of Congress for not turning over key documents in this ongoing investigation. Joining us now, Judge Andrew Napolitano, Fox Senior Judicial Analyst. So, hey. Judge, William has this report. We right. have not seen it yet, and the public hasn't seen it. But from what we hear from William's reporting, what are some of the possible legal ramifications, if any, from this information? Well, William's reporting, which is really superb and is based on documents that he obtained and which are not yet available to the public, reveals that the inspector general, whose job it is to in inspect and, and examine and investigate the Justice Department, shared a portion of his report with the lawyers for senior ATF officials in Phoenix. This is perfectly legitimate. And basically said, here's what I'm about to say about your client do you want to respond and the lawyers responded so William has seen both the allegations by the inspector general and the responses to those allegations by the lawyers for the senior ATF people formerly senior ATF people in Phoenix and basically they're pointing fingers at each other N not these people in Phoenix but Phoenix is pointing fingers at Washington DC saying you know we dispute this, we dispute that, but we don't dispute the basics of what happened. But everybody knew what was going on. Washington knew what we were doing. Washington approved and authorized it. And you can't say in your report that Washington didn't authorize it. Where the original idea originated, does that matter right now? Well, I'm say again, getting back to the legal aspects of this. Okay. We all know in this business that frequently the the events after an event, sometimes called the cover-up, can be as harmful to the, to the people involved as the events themselves. Where did this originate? This actually originated in the Bush administration. And there was a time when law enforcement believed this was a legitimate law enforcement tool. Let the guns get in the hands of the bad guys. Monitor the bad guys before they use the guns and then arrest them with the guns. The second part didn't happen here. They weren't monitored and they weren't arrested before they used them. Jenna, over 2,000 guns. We're not talking about pistols. We're talking about heavy-duty military-type uh, weaponry got in the hands uh, of, of Mexican gangs. The question is, when did the president know about it, President Obama? When did Attorney General Holder know about it? He's testified under oath. And what did they know? Real briefly here, Judge, what's next? Well, what's next is uh, Congressman Issa, who's the chair of the House Committee investigating law. This is not going to be happy with the Inspector General's report because it's basically saying all this was concocted in Phoenix. He has evidence to show that, that the Justice Department knew about it and was not candid about what it knew. There's also the issue of executive privilege that the president has claimed and the House of Representatives suing the Justice Department to get a federal judge to nullify executive privilege. Somehow I think this won't be resolved before Election Day. Call it a hunch. <laughs> Judge, thank you very much. Good to have you uh, work this all out with us. Always a pleasure, Jenna. Thank, thank you, Judge. You. Today there's been a third attack on one of our embassies in as many days. This one in Yemen. An attack on an embassy typically means it's an act of war. 
because that is sovereign U.S. territory inside those walls. So why isn't the White House considering retaliation for what happened in Egypt and Libya and now Yemen? This was an attack by a small and savage group, not the people or government of Libya. Everywhere Chris and his team went in Libya, in a country scarred by war and tyranny, they were hailed as friends and partners. And when the attack came yesterday, Libyans stood and fought to defend our post. So can acts of war only be committed by foreign governments? And what if foreign people are actually motivated to attack our embassy? Now what? Here to weigh in, Judge Andrew Napolitano, Fox News Senior Judicial Analyst. All right, Judge, Morning, so guys. technically Morning. it's not the government that has risen up against the United States there, but it's some actors within perhaps the government. Well, if what Secretary Clinton said is correct, and she has a political interest in saying what she said, because she encouraged the president to bomb Libya to rid the country of the dictator uh, Gaddafi. And appointed to the ambassador. Appointed the ambassador and to permit the people to come in who now run the government of Libya such as it is. They are not pro-Western. They are not pro-American. And uh, it is in her best interest to say this is not the government because she's unhappy with what happened. If she's right, then the, as horrific as this is, under the law, it's not an act of war. That doesn't mean we can't defend our property. It doesn't mean we can't pursue the people who did it. But it does mean it would be unlikely that the United States government would use the military to attack military targets in Libya in order to retaliate for or prevent a reoccurrence of this event. Well, now we're sending Navy ships in. Right. So what are, the orders? what are the orders to the Navy? I don't know, but what has been stated is, and this is unusual, that the, the Navy ships have been sent there to help evacuate Americans or others who want to leave. Now, those same Navy ships or other Navy ships were there when we were bombing Libya, in part to facilitate the bombing, in part to receive Americans who were there who wanted to escape. I imagine we're going to drop people on the ground like we supposedly didn't do during the invasion where we weren't on the ground. It's a great question, Brian, because we do not have a status of forces agreement with this government because there is no real central government. Right. If we had a status of forces agreement, our military, our intelligence uh, agent, uh, agencies, and law enforcement, FBI, could be right. there. So without a status of forces agreement, they are there at their own peril. The right. Obama administration has really created a maelstrom here that resulted in this, and it's probably going to get Here's worse. Here's what it's I want to know, but we're going to take a break and carry over. Here's the question I want to know. When you see that video of those protesters climbing on the embassies of the United States uh -huh. of America, what can the United States or the governments do? Hold your thought. We'll get it right after this break. Continuing coverage now on the chaos that seems to be breaking out all over the Middle East. These are live pictures, or new video at least, of the situation in Yemen. And before we went to break, Judge Andrew Napolitano still joins us now. See now, look at this video, Judge. Right. You have these people climbing all over the property of the United States. Correct. Iran, 1979. Okay. Is, this, is this legal? What can be done? A, it does remind, remind you of Iran. B, you're exactly correct. The buildings that they are on belong to the United States of America. The dirt on which the buildings were built belongs to the United States of America. The president can send in the Marines to stand inside the building, to stand outside the building, because the property extend, uh, American property extends outside the buildings, and use violence to protect American personnel and American property. This president, if he's done it at all, has done too little too late. Sure, right. right. Can we, so we can't shoot them? Yes, so we can shoot we can them. Shoot. If, if they are coming with deadly force and yeah. fire uh, or any type of weaponry is deadly force and they don't stop, we absolutely can shoot them. So how long the do Marines you let them go? In, in Iran in 1979 didn't because right. we had a president but, with a similar crazy attitude about protecting Americans and protecting American Well, if real you were estate. advising from a legal point of view, how long do you let something like that go before you? I mean, is, this, is it a legal question? It, it is a legal question. Now, there's not going to be lawyers there advising them, but these people have been trained to know when it looks like it's about to come, when they have the ability to do it, when it looks like they're not going to stop, right. you can use a violence to stop them before they use violence on you. And we get you that's the law everywhere. And right. we should understand, too, this is happening right now as we speak. The Muslim Brotherhood organizing, again, we knew this. It's happening right now as we speak in Tunisia. And this was earlier. We understand they've been dispersed. But this is happening in Yemen. Does anyone else? 
out there think it's not going to happen a little bit later today. And it's also happening to a degree in Iraq. Those insurgents that we were killing have come back because right. we've left. And they are making their presence known. I feel bad for anyone. I hope the protection's there because our soldiers have left of our huge Iraqi embassy. But I got to bring you to this. There's video out now of the press talking to each other before Mitt Romney would walk out to a press conference right. about getting on the same page and asking questions. the same pa uh, question to Mitt Romney, all attacking him for, they say, jumping the gun. Well, that shouldn't surprise anybody that the press is on the same page and that they. Uh, collaborate with each other when they decide what questions to What'd ask. What do you think of Romney. what Romney said yesterday? I have a lot of difficulty with some of the things Governor Romney has done. I'm furious that he wants to keep part of uh, Obamacare. But what he said yesterday, in my view, was statesmanlike and was far more presidential than what President Obama said. Do you think that same group of reporters were getting around the, uh, to cover President Obama to ask those same type of tough questions? You've got to be kidding. Yeah, I've never seen the president turned his back. <laughs> Just All right, Judge, thank you very much. Pleasure, guys.